Let's pray. Father, we love you and thank you again. We thank you so very much that we can praise you this morning, that we can take communion, that we can hear your word. So, Father, please impart into us some truth this morning so that we may better serve you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 Today's sermon is, I am not a sinner. Okay? So before everybody gets mad at me, let's read this scripture. <laughs> Psalm 1.5 Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Whew. So what does that mean? I don't know about y'all, but I've always heard that I'm just a sinner, right? Even after being saved, I'm still a sinner, right? Haven't you always heard that? Yes. Haven't you heard other pastors say that? Mm -hmm. Well, what does the Bible say? I mean, that might make us seem more humble to say that. Yeah, I'm still just a sinner saved by grace. We've all heard that, haven't we? A sinner saved by grace. But here it says that the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. So he's showing a contrast. That is showing a distinction and a separation from sinners and righteous. Who wants to be a sinner? Now who wants to be righteous? I want to be righteous, right? Right. <clears throat> so where do you want to stand? Okay? When Jesus became your Lord, you took on His mantle. You took on His righteousness. It was an imputed righteousness. A righteousness given to you. Not that you earned it, but it was given to you. That's why it's called grace. It's freely given. You are no longer a sinner, but righteous. But let's examine more Scripture, okay? Let's not just use this one. Let's keep looking throughout the Bible to see if this is a common thing, okay? But God wants us to see we may do something, but we are not necessarily that thing in which we do. We sin, but that doesn't necessarily make us a sinner. Okay? Just like I may put on ointment and a band-aid on my cut, but that doesn't necessarily make me a nurse or a doctor, does it? No. So let's look at the Word that may help understand if we represent sin or righteousness. Okay, so this is the definition of embodiment. Someone or something that is a perfect representative or example of a quality or an idea. Now, I don't see myself as the embodiment of sin. Sinner, right? But I do see myself as being the embodiment of Christ, Christian, right? We take on His mantle. We take on His righteousness. Yes, I do sin. Don't get me wrong. I'm not up here telling you and declaring to you that I am free from sin, but like as I said, I am not that thing in which I do. But God calls me righteous through the blood of Jesus. I am a new creation. Sin is no longer my master. I'm no longer bound by the bondage of sin because Jesus Christ is my Lord and my King and my Master now, as I believe every one of you in this room, right? All throughout Scripture, it refers to sinners as those who don't believe, those who are ungodly. But let's see what the Old Testament tells us about sinners. Let's go to Psalm 1.1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So blessed is the man who does not hang out or be with sinners. It says a blessed man is one who doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands with sinners. Basically is not found among them doing as they do, right? Proverbs 13, 6. Righteousness 
keepeth him that is upright in the way. But wickedness overfloweth the sinner. So I don't want to be numbered among the sinners, right? I want to be numbered among the righteous because I am kept upright in the way. Proverbs 13, 21 through 22. Evil pursueth sinners, but to the righteous good shall be repaid. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. See, right now we're already seeing a distinction. He's calling one sinners and one righteous. I don't want to be I don't want evil pursuing me. I want good to come to me. Proverbs 23, 17. Let not thy heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. I want to, that fear right there is a reverential fear, a respect for the Lord, a respect for God. I'm not going to envy sinners, right? He's trying to say, you righteous people, don't envy sinners. When something good happens to a sinner, don't envy them because they will be repaid in the end. If, it, if they're not repaid for their sin in this life, they will be repaid in the end, right? But not for us. Thank you, Lord. Ecclesiastes 9.2 All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and the clean and to the unclean, to him that sacrifices and to him that sacrifices not as is the good, so is the sinner, and he that sweareth as he that feareth an oath. So he's saying, this is the bad side, this is the good side. Here's the sinner, here's the righteous. So what do you want to call yourself? You want to call yourself still a sinner, or do you want to call yourself righteous? Right? So here's the last one in the Old Testament. Think about Isaiah 13, 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners there uh, out of it. Whew, that's pretty scary. I want to make sure I'm not a sinner, right? Amen. Amen. I want to make sure I'm on his side. So if we, let's just say that's right, everything we've ever heard from pastors before and other teachers, that we are still sinners. Well, then that means our Lord is coming to destroy us as well. Does that make sense? No. Maybe what they have said all along is not technically correct. Yes, we have been sinners in our lives, right? We all come to, to the cross as sinners, but we leave the cross as righteous. Amen. Because it is the blood that cleanses us of that sinner. We become a new creation. Right? Amen. So let's see what the New Testament has to say because some may say, oh, well, that's just the Old Testament. The New Testament kind of says that we are still sinners. Well, let's see what the New Testament says. Matthew 9, 13. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. Okay? So Jesus is clearly saying here, He came to get sinners to repent, to change. And if you're righteous already, good. Stay that way. Continue in that way. But He says, I am here for the sinners because they need to repent from the error of their evil ways. Mark 2.17 when Jesus heard it, He said unto them, They that are whole have no need of a physician, but they that are sick. I came, to call the, I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Here in another place, Luke 5.32, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So we got two groups, right? We have sinners and we have righteous. Where do you want to be in that? Luke 6, 31-35 And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. 
For if you love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. And if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and you shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the thankful and to the evil. So Jesus is saying here, don't be like sinners, but go further and be children of the highest. Do you want to be a sinner or do you want to be a child of God? All right. I hope we're starting to get this, right? Y'all starting to get it? Get it? Luke 15, 7. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. Do you want to be a sinner or do you want to be just? John 9, 31. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Do you want to be a sinner? Or do you want to be somebody who worships God? I want to be somebody who worships God, right? Amen. Because if you're a sinner, then God doesn't hear you in your prayers. Okay? He does not hear you. He will hear the repentant prayer of a sinner. But in your, if you're a sinner and you're just praying, He's not hearing that. He will only hear the prayer of those who worship Him. Romans 5.19 For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall be many be made righteous. Okay? So Adam sinned, and that caused everybody who came into existence to become sinners. Right? We were born into sin. We were made sinners. Okay? But through Jesus' obedience, anyone who makes Him their Lord will be made righteous. So although we do all enter this world as sinners, and some of us live longer as sinners than others, right? Mm -hmm. But once you make Jesus your Lord, you're no longer a sinner. You are made righteous. Amen. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Now, this might be a hard teaching for some people because we've been taught a long time that we are still sinners, right? That's a hard teaching to come out of. But if you see the clear words of the text, you see the Gospel, you see the truth, you see what the Bible says, you see that we are no longer sinners. Yes, we were, but no longer because we are made righteous. So there we should see ourselves as righteous. Amen. If that's the way God sees us, that's the way we need to see ourselves, don't we? Amen. Like I said earlier, I've heard this said, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Which really should be, I was a sinner saved by grace. Now I've been made righteous. That's a more correct term, right? 1 Peter 4.18 And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? He's basically saying if we're barely saved, where shall the ungodly and sinner be? Well, I sure don't want to be a sinner then, right? I want to be on that righteous side. 1 Timothy 1.9 Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers. And it goes on to talk more about the people that the law is made for, but nevertheless, he's saying the law is not made for righteous because we have become a law unto ourselves. Now, he writes the law on the tablets of our heart. 
Meaning He causes us by the Holy Spirit to want to obey Him. Yes. Okay? We have a desire to obey Him. Right? Yes. Those who are truly saved. Now, there can be people who claim to be Christians who are just a sinner or someone who never goes to church. Okay? But those who are truly saved, those who truly have the Holy Spirit, those who have had that born-again experience, those who have become new creations in Christ, those who have taken on His mantle, those who have had His righteousness imputed to them, they do walk after the Lord. They have been saved. Okay, so by now, either you're all for this, I am not a sinner thing, or you're still holding out, right? Because you may have read one or two scriptures that still make you think that you are still a sinner. Okay? So let's see if we can resolve at least one of them. Now this is one that I've always heard, and this is the one that people, for the most part, make their case that we are still sinners. Okay? So let's look at that one. This is 1 Timothy 1.15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And then Paul says, of whom I am chief. So at first glance, we're thinking, man, Paul's calling himself the chief of sinners and he, on he ongoingly is this. But Paul is not saying he is still a sinner. He is saying that Jesus came into the world to save sinners and of whom at one point in time he was chief because Paul, who was called Saul, killed or helped the process of killing of many Christians. Okay, go look in Acts. Go read that. Go see his transformation process. But he no longer is a sinner. We also see the context because in verse 9, we just read verse 9, he differentiates from sinner and righteous. So he understands that he is no longer a sinner, but he is righteous. But at one point in time, he considered himself the chief of sinners because he was actually persecuting the church and coming against Jesus and his plan. So he considered himself Thank you that you saved me, a chief of sinners. Thankfully, you take you have taken me out of that. Okay, he's not meaning he is still considered the chief of sinners. So you have to read into the context, not just that one scripture and think, oh, well, he's still a chief of sinners. No, read the whole surrounding text. Okay, the whole point there is he's saying that we all come into this as sinners. Okay, we all do. And he's going to say, even of himself, I was the chief of them. But nevertheless, he has been saved, okay? Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, right? Amen. He was saved. Thankfully, on the road to Damascus, Jesus humbled him. And he was like, oh, Lord. You know, go read all of that. It's an Acts. It's a good story. It's a good story of his transformation process. He was a zealot to go against God, going against uh, Jesus' plan. He thought he was actually working for God by doing it. He thought he was doing the right thing. But Jesus let him in on it and, and showed him, no, what you're doing is wrong. And he was like, whoa, you know, let me back up here. Okay, I'm going to serve you now. <laughs> so he flipped his being a zealot for the old law and he transformed and now he's a zealot for the New Testament, the new law. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Jesus does the same thing for us today. If you were a sinner and you were zealous for sinning, living an evil lifestyle, let's say you like getting drunk all the time, you like cussing all the time, you like uh, doing all these different things all the time, but once you truly become born again, you no longer have those desires to do those things. You have a desire to please God now, don't you? Yes. You want to make Him happy. But guess what? Those other things, those things that you might like doing, those sinful things, they never make you happy. They never bring true joy to your life. You may think that you are happy while you are doing them, 
But truly, there is some other reason that is causing you to do that. And it's the devil who wants to keep you in a trap. He wants to keep you in quicksand. The more you struggle, the more you sink, right? No, we need to be saved from out of that lifestyle. We need to be saved from that so that we can be righteous, right? Amen. Amen. I want to live a righteous lifestyle. I want to represent God well. Right? I don't want to go around and people know that I'm doing something wrong. I want people to recognize that I'm doing something right for the Lord. But so what's the point? Why not go on with why not go on uh, saying that we are still sinners? Doesn't that make you humbler? I mean, if you still think that you're a sinner, doesn't it make you humble? No. If I once was a prisoner for many years, but was set free from prison, would I still go around saying I'm a prisoner? No. That doesn't make any sense, does it? No. Let's really think about that. You were in jail, you were in prison, let's say for 20 years, and you were referred to as a prisoner, okay? Then you're out. They let you out. Finally, you're free. You've been set free. You're walking around and say, hey, everybody, I'm a prisoner. They would look at you like you're crazy. Right. So why would we as Christians still go around saying that we are sinners? It doesn't make any sense because we have been set free from our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we are no longer in bondage to sin. When we declare ourselves free, knowing that we have been set free by our Lord, it loosens the power and grip of sin over our lives. When we know we've been set free and we declare ourselves as free, I'm a free man. I'm no longer bound to that sin no longer. So I'm not going to call myself a sinner, right? right, right. I'm going to call myself righteous. Now I'm going to live up to that title. See, if you call yourself a sinner, you're going to live up to that title, believe me. But if you call yourself righteous, you're going to have a better chance to live up to that title. That's true. And I want to be righteous. I want to be free from sin. I don't want nothing to do with sin. I'm going to mess up, right? Where nobody's perfect. Right. We're all going to mess up. We're all going to sin. But I'm not a sinner. I am not the embodiment of sin, therefore carrying on its nature, therefore carrying on its representative. I'm not going to be a representative of sin. No, I'm going to be a representative of Jesus. So I want you to understand that this was not a revelation that was forged in my own mind. Okay, This was a revelation that God gave me. It was a revelation of the truth through reading His Scriptures, through understanding what He actually is conveying through the text. He wants us to see that we have been made righteous so that we will go on to fruitful lives like I talked yeah. about last Sunday. So that we will go on to a righteousness, an, an imputed righteousness, that we will be righteous and represent Him. Amen. Does anybody want that this morning? Yes. Yeah. Does anybody understand what I've been talking about? Amen. I, I mean, I, this is probably the quietest it's ever been. I mean, I was seeing this. Everybody was like, I don't know about this. I don't know about that, Pastor Brand. I don't know what you're talking about today. I hope that even if you don't you don't agree with it right now, maybe just keep stewing on those scriptures that I've shared with you. Know that it's not just one scripture I'm twisting out of context. See the vast scriptures that I've given you today. See what He is declaring to you in the Word. And go and study it for yourselves, even if you're not fully convinced right now. Hopefully you're at least leaning towards that way if you're not. But go and study out this topic for yourself because it will be transforming in your life. If you can see yourself as not a sinner any longer, but you can see yourself as righteous, like I said, it will stir you up unto more righteousness. Amen. It will stir you up into wanting to be righteous. If that is the title God has given us, imputed not by my own merits, but because of everything that He did, it will make your life so much better. Amen. 
it, like I said, you will change. You won't want to sin any longer. You will start to see it as evil and disgusting. You will desire to please God more. So, I'm not gonna ask, I'm not gonna ask for a show of hands because of how quiet it was. But I hope that you can at least start seeing what I'm talking about. And please study it out for yourselves. Anyway, we're going to have a song playing. If you have anything you need prayer for, please come on up here. I want to pray with you. Or if you feel like, maybe yeah, maybe I want to be right. You know, I do want to be righteous. I don't want to see myself as a sinner any longer. Come on up here. I'll pray with you. And I will pray that God will help you to find even more scriptures. Because guess what? That was not all the scriptures in the Bible that talked about it. That was just enough to keep you, to get you interested in this topic and keep you from getting too bored to death, okay? Because sometimes, you know, I could get up there and read all the scriptures that are there, but then y'all are like, man, I'm just ready to go eat. We got all that food back there. I'm smelling it. It smells good. Come on, Pastor, wrap it up. Come on. I'm hungry. Well, hopefully you can be hungry for the Word as well because the Word is nourishing your spirit, whether you know it or not. So hopefully... If you take hold of what I'm telling you here, this truth, and it is truth. If you take hold of this, it will change your lives. All right, man, I like that song, Jesus, Jesus. It says there's power in the name of Jesus. Sometimes even if you don't know what to pray, you don't even know what to say, just say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Because there is power, and the demons tremble at the name of Jesus. So even if you don't have any of the right words to say, and any time you're going through a situation, any time it's hard for you, just say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But let's not ever take His name in vain, right? You stump your toe, don't say, Jesus Christ. That is taking His name in vain. Don't use it as a cuss word. Use His name as a weapon, right? In spiritual warfare. I pray that y'all got something good out of the message today, truly. I hope you did. Uh, please don't rush off just yet. Uh, we have to do something real quick, but let's go ahead and close in prayer for the service. Father, we love you and thank you so very much. Thank you for this day. Thank you for all your blessings. Please let us let us have gotten a truth today from you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen.